What's cracking guys, Omar Isaf here, back with another video. This is going to be a very informative video. Skippy, sit your ass down, let me ask you a question. Recently, have you experienced a setback or an injury in the gym? I did it again, I slipped the disc. If you're like most people, the answer is probably at some point in your training career, you will experience some sort of setback. For this video in particular, we're defining an injury, not in terms of the medical terminology, an acute injury where something happens, so let's say you have an ACL tear, uh, something may have occurred, so an acute trauma. I'm talking specifically about maybe some nagging issue, so it could be something like a ACL uh, tear, in which case you need to seek uh, medical help, or a setback, so you might notice you have chronic pain in your elbow that has affected how you bench press. You can't bench press with full range of motion on the deadlift. You seem to have non-specific lower back pain. How do you continue to train with these things and still make gains? This is the purpose of today's video. I'm about to blow your mind. By the end of this video, you're probably going to be saying, whoa, whoa. You see, recently in the last several months, we had on Iron Culture a bunch of different individuals for a pain science episode. We had Jordan Feigenbaum, we had Quinn Hennock, uh, and then we had Nick Lecamelli. And I think the biopsychosocial model, which honestly sounds like a Slipknot album or song, is a very good approach. And the idea of trying to build that resilience, the robustness that yes, we can, is very important. However, sometimes when individuals are looking for concrete solutions, so ideas in terms of how to change up their training in order to keep it effective, sometimes people can be told, just walk it off. It's not as big of a deal as you think it is. And I think those are important for expectation management in terms of, you know, you feel pain, it doesn't necessarily mean you're suffering from an injury, but what do you do? And so the common advice is to manage load, the load that you're lifting, and that makes a lot of sense in today's video, however, I'm gonna give you five different variables we could play with in order to make sure you can train. Because I'm gonna assume, like most individuals, you kinda care about the big three, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. And in this video in particular, I'm gonna take a look at the squat and use myself as an example. Someone who recently, because I was trying to be explosive, terrible idea, sprint training, jump training, Omar, what you doing? Um, a little bit of lateral meniscus, again, not a big deal, but how do I train through it? I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing and the order that we'd attack things. So let's assume you have some sort of setback. Again, you can apply this to the deadlift, the squat, and the bench press. We're talking about the squat in particular. The first thing we wanna take a look at is load management. For a lot of people, they'll tend to notice that at a certain weight, their injury or their setback gets triggered. And what I mean when I say that, they it sets off, they feel it, it starts to become aggravated. There's some sort of percentage or load amount, so let's say 80%, 90%. If this is the case, it's relatively simple. Manage the load, your training load you're using, the volume and intensity, so that you could still train, practice the movement exactly as you want to practice the movement without really any negative consequences. Temporarily using less weight for one, two, three months until that area feels better and you gradually introduce heavier loads, no big deal whatsoever. So most people know about load management. Point two, tempo. Now, for a lot of individuals, myself included, if you move through range of motion perhaps too quickly, so for the squat, if I move too quickly, I find the knee gets slightly aggravated on the eccentric. What do we do? We change up the tempo, we slow it down. In that way, I could still keep the load pretty damn high, but I could get a better training effect. So now, we're not only talking about load management, we're talking about tempo. See if you could play around with tempo and see if that changes things on the deadlift, on the squat, on the bench press. And if that is the case, then keep that tempo and gradually try and maintain that full range of motion. Because personally, I'm an advocate of trying to maintain full range of motion, managing load first, and then tempo. And then next, we wanna talk about range of motion. So let's assume for you now that once again, you tried uh, load, so anything above 70% still seems to irritate you tempo you tried that but again you have that trigger point let's talk about range of motion when does it occur okay so it occurs almost at parallel you're gonna see for me here I set up pins for a squat I'd recommend a pin squat you can also have a high box I personally prefer a higher pin squat I'm almost at parallel so just before the point where the knee or the area becomes triggered, and in that way I can still keep a high training effect. I'm practicing the movement, I'm probably using slightly less total load, but I'm essentially squatting to the depth that I want. So point number three would be to take a look at the range of motion. On the deadlift, this is very similar to where again you do a block pull instead. Okay, 
Next, I want to talk about variations. So again, we're still trying to stick with the squat. And what we could do now, we could do a box squat where, again, I'm talking specifically in this video, using an example, the case study of myself, and talk about knee issues. We could try a box squat where the total shin angle is more vertical, so we're dipping further back with the hips. We're now squatting, and you saw I used the box as pretty damn low. It's not SPF depth. We're uh, squatting full range of motion now with a box and we're changing the mechanics slightly. So it's kind of like a low bar squat. So I squat high bar, or well, if we want to shift the tension away from the knees, we make it a low bar or a box squat. So we do an exercise variation. Now I do want to mention something that is anecdotal. And so again, take it with a grain of salt by fine as Percy helped myself. With my knee, I actually try and do the opposite. Well, in addition, I'll have a separate day where I'll try and load the knee as much as possible using a very light load and getting extra range of motion. How do you do that on a squat? A front squat, specifically a pause at the bottom. So we're really focusing now on knee extension. And I have found personally, once again, having that extra, the greater range of motion, pausing at the bottom, working through it instead of fearing it, so fearing the area that gets triggered, has helped me immensely. So when we talk about variations, find what you can do that doesn't aggravate it, but also there comes a time and place where you need to slowly reintroduce the movement. And I personally, when I had a little bit of that SI issues going on, I worked on a deficit delve afterwards, so a larger range of motion. And I have found that has helped me. Lastly, if you worked all the way down the list and you still can't do the movements that you want to do, that's okay. Use a different implement. I've shown a ton of different squat variations, but there's no shame whatsoever in using the leg press. Let's say for you, the leg press, for some reason, it doesn't aggravate your knee. Well, go ahead and use the leg press until slowly you can start to reintroduce the squat. And I want to emphasize that because as competitive lifters or as individuals that like to lift, as long as you don't feel that aggravation, and as long as once again, you have a sound mind where you remind yourself, hey, this pain, it might not really be as informative as I think, it might not be a good indicator of what's going on down there, gradually reintroducing the movement that you like and seeing what happens over time, I think is a safe bet. But I wanted to give some concrete advice for everyone out there right now all the homies that may have suffered from a setback and they just wanna know what to do. I think this is the exact approach I would follow. I would go after load, after that tempo, see if tempo changes things up, range of motion, variation, and then lastly, a different implement altogether. Before I forget, I want to give a shout out to the strength therapist who actually broke this down, Sam Spinelli. I think he puts out excellent content. He had a recent Instagram post talking exactly about this. I think he takes an evidence-based approach when it comes to pain science while also trying to enable individuals to do exactly what they want. I thought I'd make this quick video from the trenches informing everyone out there because once again, telling people just walk it off doesn't really give them a concrete plan. And in this way, I can say for myself, I did recently in that fat loss phase, I lost the weight, I'm looking better, I was still able to train my lower body. And maybe that will be the final point is that your body doesn't know that it has 400 pounds on its back. So don't think just load in order to induce a hypertrophic effect or honestly in order to get stronger. If you do a tempo squat, and so let's say you're using 50% of your one rep max, but you're loading the quads, you're loading the legs, the entirety of the movement, you're going to get a training effect. Anyways, I gotta get out of here. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you thought this video was informative, go ahead and like the video. Lastly, we have that sale going on. It's ending, I think, in 24 hours. Position USA, the shoe company I co-own. We just released the P3 Plus, which I proudly stand behind. We improved the bottom, so the stitching on the bottom is now on the inside and toe cap. Use discount code NOVEMBER for $20 off. Again, it expires, I think, in about 24 hours, so go ahead and check it out if you're looking for high quality weightlifting shoes and we also have powerlifting shoes in the form of the R1. I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.